Hi all, our instructive game today will have the theme of G-File Attack. To demonstrate this theme, I'm going to choose the brilliancy prize game Hoi, Carsten vs Boris Golko. So this was played in Thessalonica Men's Olympiad of 1988. Hoi playing white played D4. By the way, Golko has a 3-1 record against Kasparov with four draws, so he had a very good record against former world champion Gary Kasparov. Playing black, he played now here c5 against this um, quite solid continuation by white, just knight f3. And after e3, white's um, closing in his queen's bishop, so it seems quite a passive coiled spring kind of setup. I, I term it the coiled spring because it's actually a lot of latent energy white can build up. As we'll see, um, this actually happens in the game that white's position kind of um, opens up a lot later. So after bishop d3, b6, now white castles. And after bishop b7, Golko is playing very classically, just trying to increase pressure on the e4 square. After knight d2, he now exchanges on d4. So he's releasing a bit of that central tension. And after e takes d4, if we have a look now, we see that white has this semi-open e file, which might be useful. useful. But also, um, if the rook comes to e1, then also maybe white has knight f3 to g3, as in the game. That's quite a nice manoeuvre. So after bishop e7, white does now play rook e1. And after castles, white strengthens his position a little bit by playing move c3. So he's not really giving black much to bite on here. There aren't any easy weaknesses. It seems white's opening has been quite a success for avoiding theory, but having a pleasant position. After d6, now Hoi plays queen e2, and Golko reacts with rook e8, so he puts that rook on the same line as the queen. Potentially black will be liberating position with e5. White now plays knight f1, so the knight can comfortably come now to g3, so maybe with attacking prospects against black's king. We'll see um, the theme of the game, though, is, is quite vivid in this game, how the g-file was opened up. So after knight bd7, knight g3, black now played bishop f8. And now white provokes a slight weakness by playing bishop g5. So this is quite an annoying pin. And the first weakness is tempted around black's king. Black plays now h6 to kick away that bishop. If bishop h4 here, that might be risky. Let's have a quick look. Because of bishop takes f3 followed by g5. So bishop takes f3. G takes, and now G5, and so White would be losing a bishop for nothing here. So Hoy just retreated his bishop to D2, mission accomplished, he's created a slight weakness. And after Queen C7, he plays now the crude kind of move, Bishop C2. So it has some simple ideas, Queen D3 to have that battery of Bishop and Queen, eyeing that sensitive H7 square, and perhaps also the Knights here can join in the fun with Knight H5 to try and add pressure to that f6 knight defending the h7 square. So it's a crude and simple move. Black now plays bishop d5 with the idea of bishop c4. So provoking actually white to create a slight weakness on the queen side with b3. But the weakness isn't that significant. Black plays now queen b7. So adding his own battery now on this diagonal, threatening to fracture white's pawns with bishop takes f3. Hui now actually plays a very provocative move. He plays knight h4. So he avoids that immediate structural damage. But black does have the option now of playing g5 followed by bishop takes f3. But this is Hui's intention. He wants to lure these pawns forward around the black king position to create some more weaknesses, some more targets for attack. Golka though plays a bit positioning now. He plays b5. So he tries to stop white from playing c4, because that would be annoying, because the bishop's quite pleasantly placed on d5. He doesn't want it kicked away with c4. Now white plays queen d3. And in this position, black is now tempted to play g5. Now, although black does forcefully inflict structural damage on white's position, after knight f3, black now takes on f3. We'll see after g takes f3 that white has two immediate biting points on black's g5 pawn. So white now has the possibility of either h4 or f4. He chooses actually the more controversial um, move, seemingly with 
less compensation, less immediate compensation. He plays actually h4 to try and rip open this g line. So this is a very interesting move, and one which Ribka really doesn't estimate the potential of. It's um, a bit like how in one of the Superman films the, co the computer was defeated uh, because Superman brought this um, incredible liquid, explosive liquid, and before the computer could estimate it, you know, the computer was in meltdown. So here, with this H4, you know, Colston is really showing the potential of this G file in dramatic fashion. After G takes H4, Knight E4, Black plays Queen C6. So what are the immediate threats? Well, there's no immediate threats because there's no pressure at the moment on the G file. So the next move is quite logical, just king h1. So the king sidesteps to make way for the rook to come to g1. After knight h5, it seems, you know, is black holding this? Well, rook g1. And now, um, you know, I've been looking with Rivka at this position in some detail. So Rivka's defensive choice here, instead of the game continuation, which is king f8, is to play f5. Now, I'm going to show you a quick variation here. So bishop takes h6, and after f takes e4, the key move to continue white's attack is queen e3 here. So this is an example continuation now, which would actually end up with white having an advantage. So bishop g6, and in this kind of continuation, believe it or not, queen takes h4, so hitting f6, and white can still build up a lot of pressure. After rook g3, Ribka gives this as a, a big advantage now. After rook g1, Golko actually played king f8. And now we see an amazing set of moves. First, Hoi plays rook takes g7. So he's loosening and dismantling black on the dark squares. So after king takes g7, he now draws the king up the board at the cost of another bishop. Bishop takes h6. After king takes h6, Rook g1. Here, you know, again, Ribka thinks, you know, what is going on here? Black's got a big advantage. Uh, but then it switches its evaluation after a certain depth and starts to feel that white's actually winning this. After f5, queen e3 check, f4, there's an absolutely brilliant move here which was played. Um, I'll give you five seconds, or if you want to stop the video, to try and find it. In this position, what would you play with the white pieces? So, um, five seconds. Hoy played knight takes d6, so offering his queen. So let's see, f takes and then knight f7 will be mate. So black played queen takes d6. And now what would you play? Um, if you want to stop the video... Hoy played queen d3, so it seems, you know, black's going to just defend now the g6 square with um, knight f8 and try and get away with it. But there's a forced mate in two now, so this is a nice um, little puzzle position, mate in two. Can you spot the mate in two here? Again, stop the video if you, if you want. I'll tell you in, um, in two seconds from now. White finished the game spectacularly with queen h7 check and Golko resigned because if knight takes h7 then rook g6 mate. So that's a spectacular g-file attack. Let's have a quick look in overview and summary. There wasn't much else black could do here. Um, if let's say knight, in, in this position knight here uh, there's a new variation, just queen g6, mate. So, so the, the g6 is um, not able to be defended. Um, it's it's all, all all over. If rook g8, queen h7, mate. So let's have a look in overview and summary at this g-file attack. So white played this kind of coiled spring system. So he's got latent energy in his position, and a very pleasant position out of the opening. And it's seemingly, you know, a very simple way of playing, just provoking first the weakness, securing a bit of the queen side with b3, allowing structural damage in this provocation for black to play g5, 
and once black had played g5 there's two targets two ways of exploiting g5 to play f4 h4 so Hoy chose h4 and then we see this amazing um, couple of sacrifices here first the exchange sack and now a whole bishop sack so this is really amazing pressure to, to sort of get at the black king so black was kind of defenseless, Cho chose f5, but after this brilliant continuation now, knight takes d6, black's had it. So queen takes d6, queen d3, with crushing threat. If knight g3 check, by the way, here, just rook takes g3, so that doesn't really help. So knight f8, queen h7, and that was it. I hope you enjoyed that game. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.